Hey, 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 everybody, and welcome to another episode of Song Swap Showdown. We're so excited for you to be here with us today. As we're recording this, April 15th, tax day hey. here in the United States of America. <laughs> Yay! Oh, oh boy, tax oh day. Boy. <laughs> Everybody's excited for tax day. <laughs> Which is the perfect day to, I think, do this show. Yes. Yeah. This show couldn't have come at a better time. Help people get lost in their sorrows. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this is like, if you're stressing that about tax day, mm -hmm. you know, um, this is a good way to celebrate the day. Because <laughs> so I don't want to, like, bulk assume. Right. I would, I'm going to say the majority of people who dread April mm -hmm. 15th yeah. are the ones who usually owe. Yeah, why? Well, oh, I mean, that's that's I'm <laughs> right? still. Like, I'm... <laughs> so we wait, we wait, as opposed to the people who get the refunds. They don't mm -hmm. worry about April 15th. No, <laughs> no. They're, they're like, as soon as they can file, they're filing. Yeah. They for those of us, for those of us who are self-employed, run our own yeah. businesses. I mean, listen, we you can pay quarterly and all that, but uh, I usually do it all at the end. So mm -hmm. <laughs> and it seems so bad i yeah. think we're in the majority chris i think so too i think so too so we once did a thing ages ago like well how do you submit your receipts to your taxes uh for your to your accountant for your taxes are you like a yeah. uh, a receipts in a shoebox type of person or do you have it all organized ready to go on like quickbooks and everything and like <laughs> and chris had his in a shoebox and i had mine in a ziploc baggie <laughs> yeah yeah Neither of us are super right. prepared. I, I don't yeah. hand that to my accountant though. I just save them and then I, <laughs> I use them to go uh you know check against my actual my, my book. So Oh, I do. <laughs> I don't hand them to the accountant. I have them and then after taxes I'm like, all right. Better. I go here, Carrie. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There you go. It's two types of people in this world. Yeah. Well, hey, everybody. Well, let us know right now in the comments below. Uh, did you do your taxes? Are you submitting today? Like, are you falling for extension, which I just might be? I'm not 100% sure yet. I'll find out later when I talk to my accountant. But um, let us know. If you're, if you're doing any of those things, uh, we want to welcome everybody who's checking us out on the live stream right now, right here, whether you're watching us on YouTube or Twitch, want to say hi to all our friends there. Also on Facebook, if you're watching us on there as well, of course, you can always check Song Swap Showdown out on demand uh, on YouTube anytime uh, where you can watch full episodes of the show, plus highlight clips, plus music video reactions, plus shorts, all kinds of stuff. Uh, we're always posting things there. And of course, on the go, anywhere you get podcasts, um, anywhere. That's it. We're, we are literally just about everywhere at this point. So mm -hmm. you guys have no excuse to not listen to us unless you just don't like us. And that's, and that's okay. And that's okay. That's okay. Oh, and Ashley Feller checking in with, she filed an extension. There you go. Here. <laughs> That's for you, Ashley. <laughs> Don't forget to follow your annual report. Yes, I actually just got mine, Ashley. Thank you. I, I have to do that as well. It's yes, it is a penalty um, in the state of New Jersey. You have to file uh, before the end of April. So thank you. That public service announcement coming in from <laughs> Ashley Danielle Feller. I love it. Thank you, Ashley. Appreciate you. So listen, guys, if this is your first time checking out Song Swap Showdown, uh, beyond tax talk, <laughs> we talk about music here. We we mainly talk about music and the occasional occasional tax talk once a year. <laughs> once a year. In today's show, of all things, so we're talking about tax and then getting high. People getting are going to be like, what? Yeah. What on earth? What on earth is going on today? What did I land on today? Well... First off, once again, if you are new to our show here, how our show typically works is that Amanda and I each swap three songs with each other that we don't think the others heard before. We try our best to make sure there's songs that we haven't heard before. So we're exposing ourselves to some new tunes. However, it happens. Listen, there's a lot of music out there, so it definitely happens. Uh, we then take those songs, we rate them on a scale of one to five records, with one being a... Hard pass, dumpster fire, as some may say. That's correct. Uh, it's just not a song that we like. Uh, we're it's a skip. It's skip. Yeah. It's an immediate skip. Maybe not not even choosing to put it on. So yeah. there's that. All the way up to five records, which, as we like to say, is heavenly music to our ears. That's right. It is the song that is going on the eternity playlist. It's the chef's kiss. Of music, of songs. You are passionate about that chef kiss today. Yes. Mwah. Yes. Five, that's a that's a five record tune, ladies and gentlemen. 
five record tune. So how do we pick these songs? Well, we spin the wheel of themes at the end of every single episode, and that determines the songs that we will be picking each and every week. So this week's theme, as we spun the wheel, once again, is another Tina Johnson pick. Yeah. Uh, t- we didn't realize that Tina basically dominated the entire wheel with our picks when we put the picks on, but um, this week's pick is is something, you know, near and dear to, to my heart. <laughs> Not so much Amanda's. No. But I'm going to let Amanda talk about what t- this week's theme is, if you haven't guessed it from the title. Amanda, <laughs> what's today's theme? So Tina's excellent theme that we would have never put on the wheel, so I'm so glad when we get the suggestions because... Yeah. This is this is a show we would not have done otherwise. So Tina, thank you. And it is all about songs you listen to while getting high. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> disclaimer. I've never in my life did a drug ever, 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 ever. You never you never smoked the pot? <laughs> I've never smoked the pot. I took Half of I could in once for pain we, t- over 20 years ago. Right. And I got so sick from it. Yeah. I said, never again. I, I can't take that. That makes oh. me sick. That that's that take that that makes me that makes me sick. And all I could think of as I was throwing up was why do people do this on purpose? <laughs> well, I will say, okay, so there's a huge world of difference, really quick. I'm sure. Let, let me delineate. There's a huge world of difference between a pharmaceutical <laughs> drug like Vicodin versus plant medicine like cannabis. Huge and, difference. Completely different experience, by the way. And I will say, it's not because I wouldn't have loved it. Mm hmm. That's why I don't do it because right. I would have loved it too much. I'm very addictive. Mm-hmm. And we've talked about this with drinking. I've never drank before because right. I knew that if I had it, I would have loved it. So like at the age of eight, I'm like, just say no, Amanda, just say no. And I Absolutely. have um, because I would have loved it too much because yeah. I'm such an addictive person. So I'm not against people doing it. It's legal in many, many states. Yes, Michigan being bo- one of them. Both of our and states. Well. <laughs> yep. We have I have friends who are very much in the cannabis in the culture <laughs> in the culture so i'm not against it i just don't do it so right, when right. This, this when the wheels spun this i was like oh no and chris was so nice he's like well you can just do it at getting high on life and i'm like that's fair that's yeah. fair but i think i found yeah. a decent blend with the songs that i chose i think you chose a very good little playlist for sure and yeah and i i do want to i do want to make note of that everybody like listen i know we're, we're 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 gonna obviously lean very heavy into the getting high, getting stoned, you know that whole thing. But I do want you know I do want to say for those of you that don't that don't partake, whether you yeah. choose or you gave it up, perfectly fine. Like you don't have to have a vice to actually you know be nope. high. Like we we're talking about, like there's a lot of endorphin highs, like people who work out, people who mm-hmm. you know just like love life you know and there's lots of ways to feel high and to get yourself ready and prepared and kind of achieve a level of consciousness (laughs) that you're looking for a level of escapism so just want to say that yeah you're you're, as 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 ian says for example yeah my only drug of choice is the chris and amanda show you know what that's a great drug of choice (laughs) great drug of choice great drug of choice yeah so i mean listen whatever it is for you whatever gets you high gets you in that state then uh more power to you i we're not here to nope. to tell you wrong or right. But today, we're going to give you the soundtrack, at least some songs for your soundtrack, that will get you there. So we've got a great mix of songs today. I think that uh, today's playlists that we're swapping with each other are very indicative, once again, of our musical styles and tastes. Yeah. Hopefully... My playlist turns you on to some songs that you'd never heard before or bands mm. that you'd never heard before. I know your playlist to me, other than one song, um, I had never heard before. So Free. Well, I was I, actually I should say maybe two. I mean the Casey Musgraves t- tune I, I, I You did, may have. But not to the level that uh, I listened to it today or yeah. actually this weekend. For sure. <laughs> yeah. For sure. So all right, so let's get into the show. So first of all, Amanda. Mm-hmm. Before we get into anything, okay, I got a question for you. Yes, and and I think you might know this one because I know you live under a rock, but I don't think you live under that much of a rock mm. as much as you pertain to be. Ooh. Do you know what four twenty means? Other than no. other than April twentieth, <laughs> I actually do. All right, because as I said, I have a lot of friends who partake, mm-hmm. 
and they always post about it on their social media. So I guess I, I don't know exactly like word for word, but right. it's just the national day to partake and get high, right? Yeah, it's it's kind of the uh, the stoner holiday. Uh, it's become that. It's you know the national. I don't know. It's not even a national because it's not federally legal. But like, yeah, it's become recognized as the uh, as the the official or unofficial stoner holiday. Which, by the way, whatever dispensaries are located in your town, watch out for a lot of great specials and deals because they will be coming your way. Take advantage of those. Um, but just to, real quick, the origins of four twenty. Right? Where educate. did it come from? Where 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 did it come, where did it come from? from? Well, yes. There's a lot of conjecture. It's, you know, like any, like any stoner stuff that's been passed mm-hmm. on. Who knows if it's true? Who knows if it even av- actually happened for real? But um, <laughs> according to PBS.org, by the way, because I was like, oh, PBS.org. <laughs> that's a very official, very reputable uh, journalistic movie. outfit. Yeah. So let's let's take PBS.org's uh, article on 420. Here we go. Okay, let's do it. The origins of the date and the term 420 generally were long murky. I I can agree with that. Some claimed it referenced to a police code for marijuana possession, which is what I always thought it was because 420, yeah. Or that it arose from Bob Dylan's Rainy Day Woman number 12 and 35, which is refrain with with its refrain of everybody must get stoned. 420 being the product of 12 times 35. But a consensus has emerged that it started with a group of bell-bottom buddies from San Rafael High School in California who called themselves the Waldos. A friend's brother was afraid of getting busted for a patch of cannabis he was growing in the woods at Point Reyes, so he drew a map and gave the team's permission to harvest a crop, the story goes. During the fall of 1971 at 4.20 p.m., just after classes and football practice, the group would meet up at the school's statue of chemist Louis Pasteur, smoke a joint, and head out to search for the weed patch. They never did find it, but it was their private lexicon, 420 Louis, and later just 420, that would take on a life of its own. The Waldos saved postmarked letters and other artifacts from the 1970s referring referencing 420 which they later kept in a bank vault and when the Oxford English Dictionary added the term in 2017 it cited some of those documents as the entry's earliest recorded uses by the way kudos to stoners for having enough foresight to save letters <laughs> That say I the am. word for that reference 420 and put it in a safe. <laughs> put it in a bank vault. Yeah. That is right. remarkable. Yeah. And Ashley, yes, because PBS is the authority on uh, on jazz cabbage. <laughs> That's correct. <laughs> PBS, I'm telling you, yeah. for the win. I'm a PBS watcher. I really am. Yes. So PBS, official, official news outlet. Officially, that's the official officialness of <laughs> 420. <laughs> I, Published I, April twentieth, uh-huh, uh huh, <laughs> of twenty twenty three last uh, last year. So, <laughs> I so that's fantastic. I, I assume <laughs> there has to be some sort of documentary on it, like to I'm there sure, has there, to there be might some be. sort of movie on these these kids. I'm I'm sure there has owners. to be. I would I would guarantee if you type in YouTube, there's a, a, a type it in to, YouTube, there's a thing. I'm gonna have to watch that. Yeah. I love me a good documentary. Yes, good documentary. So, um. I would like to see that too if it's out there. I'm like, yeah, looking. I'm we're gonna like, we're gonna have to watch it. Yeah, I'll have to put the uh, you know I'll put this link in the uh, in the notes here for anybody. Okay, wants that's to. cool. I you know PBS, we can thank Mr. Rogers himself yes. for advocating that they need funding on a federal level to keep it going because they heard him and they were like, well, I don't think there's anything else to debate. You no. get the money. That's right. You get the money, and then you, you get, get the great. Money. Uh, investigative journalism, yeah. like how how Pot Holiday 420 <laughs> came to be. Hey, we need to know. We need to know. We need to know. And They've they... done the work, and here yeah. it is presented for all of us. So, boom. All right, let's get into some music talk right. here. All right, let's do it. <laughs> let's, 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 notes. let's talk some music. All right, who's going first today? You know, I'm going to go to first. All right, you are exactly going to okay. go. You are going first today. All right, here we go. All right, because. Keep in mind, Kick us Chris off. sent me his songs, and he was like, have fun. <laughs> <laughs> have fun with these, Amanda. And so I was really expecting something so different than what I ended up listening to because, spoiler alert, I kind of really dug all of them. I had a feeling you might. I had a feeling you might, but, I you know, I, I don't want to make it assumptions. I don't want to make it any assumptions. <laughs> Your first song to me is All Mine by Portishead. 
Portishead. Portishead. Port- Portish. <laughs> you were you were you were close. Portish. I, was, I added an H somewhere. So I'm t- with this song. Mm-hmm. I am torn between just grooving and chilling to mm-hmm. it, or do I want to pull out my hair a little bit in some parts of it? It's uh, it's got it, that kind of, it's got that kind of, uh, <sighs> like kind of catch and release kind of a, a feel. Yes, to it, you Ooh, know? catch and release is a really good way to describe it because it's very groovy. The sound is really fun. I actually really like her vote. Like it's, it's yeah. really good. Beth Gibbons is is amazing vocals. I there's everything that I Portishead is everything that I love about music. Like I just I love Portishead so much. Um, I'm actually like really excited because Beth Gibbons just announced after like I forgot what is it like 18 years or something. She's finally Ooh. dropping a solo record like after Ooh. all these years. So Portishead came out in the 90s and they I won't say that they invented the genre, okay. but they were definitely sort of part of like this 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 genre called trip hop. Back in the oh, very early '90s, and there was a bunch of, but they were the ones that kind of stood out and like really. I mean, they never called themselves that. That was definitely something a very like media invented okay. genre name, but trip hop, and they sort of had that. That was like their moniker and what they became known for, like combining like hip hop and jazz and all that stuff, and just you know, basically, yeah, trip hop. <laughs> Sounds like what I do when I'm walking. I trip and then I <laughs> you trip and you hop. <laughs> Try to play it off, <laughs> you know, <laughs> but it was, it was like, it was smooth. It was groovy. Yeah. And then it was nails on the chalkboard. Yeah. You know, did you, did you do any research on the song? Do you know what it's about? Um, I don't, I, yes, yeah. I did, but now okay. my mind can't recall. So the song is about someone who is completely obsessed with the yes. romantic partner and feels yeah. very happy whenever they are together. The protagonist is convinced that the partner belongs to them and won't let them go. They want their partner to be with them forever, even after death. All mine. I mean, it's like, Mar- <laughs> it's like Marcus and I. Porter said, <laughs> all mine. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> That's coming from uh, callmefred.com, by the way. <laughs> yeah, that one was – there was a handful of these that I was like, oh, because our go-to usually is songfacts.com. And yeah. there was – I was struggling to find yeah. some facts on some of these. So, yeah, I did I did catch that, the obsessive nature of this song. And you know what I really liked about this song mm-hmm. is this is a great movie song. Oh, yeah. With, uh, like if someone's getting prepared to seek revenge on somebody. Yep. And so my mind started going through all these scenarios of like the best movies that this could have been in. Yep. And I associate it with like a woman preparing for revenge. It was very empowering. Yeah. It's uh, it's a, it's a, it's a great, <laughs> great song. I have to, there's something I wanted to see if I could uh, find for everybody. So listen, by the way, uh, I mean, yeah, you could just type this in. It, it comes in, comes up everywhere. Uh, Basically, Portishead did a they did a live, completely live concert at Roseland in New York City, which is Ooh. rest in peace, one of the best venues in New York. I love going there. And they did it, and it was released in eighty seven or ninety eight. Sorry, nineteen ninety eight, and it is outstanding. And it's them like basically doing all their songs, like a bunch of the songs live, and so you can actually see, and they're playing with an orchestra mm. and all that. Um, it's definitely something that I highly recommend. Let me put. Let me see if I can drop the link here in the uh, in the uh, comments here for anybody. And while you're doing it. that, I'm going to show Ian's comment that says a good murder board song. Indeed, Ian. Indeed. It is a good murder board song. <laughs> <laughs> as I bring yeah. up, as I as I bring up the murder board, there it is. <laughs> I, I should not laugh like that. I'm like, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> my murder board. <laughs> <laughs> one of these days. Yeah. Oh, Lord. One of these days. All right. So let's listen. Let's, if no one's ever heard the song, mm-hmm. uh, All Mine by Portishead, off, off of uh, Portishead, the, the name, the record, Portishead. Um, check this out. I think you guys are going to dig this. So we'll listen to a little bit of this and hopefully we won't get dumped. <laughs> hopefully. All the clouds. Oh, let me start it over. Here. Kind of like James Bond. Yeah. I immediately was intrigued. Yeah. All the stars may shine a bright. The bass line of the song is amazing. All the clouds. Big 
right away. You're locked in, man. Locked in. It's playing with my brain a little bit. Yeah. I'm like, ow, that kind of hurts. <laughs> it's but it so also good. feels so good. <laughs> so this their whole this whole record is amazing. Uh, actually, all their records. Um Portishead, uh and um the the first one, which is I think sour with one with sour times on it. Um just so good. Yeah. Exactly. I love the bass on this song. Yeah, me too. Mm-hmm. Actually, it, yet so locked in right away. Like, you can't help it. Like, and it is a great, it's a great, uh, you know, partaking, partaking <laughs> in the, uh, <laughs> in the, in the, uh, in the, in the, nature's... right, in, in plant medicine, in, in the, uh, in the devil's lattice. <laughs> I, I feel like we need to have some sort of <laughs> the devil's lattice. We need to have some sort of disclaimer at some yeah. point in this is this is for entertainment purposes only, everybody. Adult use only. Adult that's, that's, use. Adult, adult use. Adult use only, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. Everybody. We click the not for kids on our YouTube channel. Always do. Always, Always do. do. Yeah. All right. So, um, all right. So, all mine by Porta said. Mm-hmm. What, what do, do you think? It? I, it, this may surprise you, but maybe not. I'm giving this a four record. Four, four record. record. Four records. I really, I dig it. I think if it was on in the house, yeah. guys wouldn't say, turn it. Right. I wouldn't necessarily, like, this is not a get me fired up song. This is very much a chill, like, I'm just oh, yeah. relaxing, yeah. doing nothing, maybe plotting to murder. Like, it, it <laughs> almost... It kind of it really got my head. How does Amanda relax? She plots. <laughs> she plots. I watch true crime and she plan, watches true crime and plots plan some shenanigans. Plots. <laughs> <laughs> I know nothing. <laughs> four records. Four, four records. Four records. All right. No, I'm I'm glad you like this. I think that you will like a lot more of Portishead stuff. I bet um, I will. Um, the the record their last record that they did they only did three um well four if you count the uh the live thing from roseland but uh the third record is definitely not as chill as these Hi. other ones definitely it was called the Porter said the third and it's mm-hmm. uh a little bit more out there a little bit more noisier a little just more experimental um it's definitely very interesting but not like the first two records at all so i i I like it it took a little time to grow Mm -hmm. on me just because i was expecting so i like that they subverted my expectations on that one Mm -hmm. um they definitely pushed it in a different direction but i think you'll enjoy i think you'll enjoy the first two records and then after you kind of live with those then check out the third one i can do that i wouldn't start with the third one i think the third one's going to turn you off i yeah i accept that advice (laughs) <laughs> advice accepted advice accepted. <laughs> all right so your first song to me mm-hmm. is by bocephus <laughs> mr hank williams jr with you know that's right family tradition i i was by the way i gotta say i was super like i i couldn't wait to see your list of songs <laughs> like i just was like i was so fascinated i cannot wait to see amanda's list of songs so I'm going to ask you, Amanda, uh-huh. why is this on the list? How did Bo well, Cephas Family Tradition, I mean, I know the lyrics, all that, but why is it on your list? So it is, when I think of getting high, I don't know. I feel like you're either just being joyful and merry with a group of people. Mm-hmm. And I feel like this could, this is just something that I put it into, like, if you were at a bar, which this is a big karaoke song. Big Really? Karaoke song yes and the whole bar wow. it's like hank why do you drink everyone says to get drunk to get drunk yeah why do you roll smoke to get high and so like to me like this one automatically went on the list because mm-hmm. it's just one of those you're gonna have fun you're you're just hanging out with some buddies i i think this is definitely a buddy song not necessarily right. like a girlfriend song yeah i mean i i could definitely get that i mean i know that um I didn't realize it was a big karaoke song because it's not really a karaoke song around here, at least mm-hmm. that I've seen. Mm-hmm. But 
I definitely uh, the the lyrics are great. I mean, and I was looking at some stuff, and it was just saying uh, on American Songwriter, American Songwriter dot com. It's like, well, what's behind the meaning of the song, right? So, um, essentially, just if you guys don't know any kind of history about Hank Williams, Hank Williams Mm Senior, if you guys don't know the history about Hank, well, then. Uh, basically, uh, as it says here on so- American Songwriter.com, is Hank Williams, with all his rightful prestige and, and indelible contributions to country music, was also known for his alcoholism. Partaking. And, yes, he was a he was a raging uh, alcoholic. Yeah. Uh, his drinking actually got him fired from the Grand Old Opry. Now that's got to be a lot uh, to, to get fired from the Grand Old. Yeah. You got to be a real a real raging boozer yeah. <laughs> for that to happen. Um, but he got him fired from the Grand Ole Opry and eventually contributed, unfortunately, to his death in 1953. Really? He was young. Young, yeah. Very young. Uh, subsequently, uh, Williams Jr., his son, Bocephus, also fell into the trappings of substance abuse, a fact that he's been very, very public about. So as it goes, uh, as it keeps saying here, instead of a vicious cycle, Williams Jr. calls the pipeline from his father alcohol abuse to his own family tradition. It certainly softens the reality issue. Something outlaw country singers are adept at while admitting his own issues with drinking and drugging. He adds a little humor into the mix with the refrain, I'm just carrying on an old family Family tradition. tradition. The song isn't meant to bash his father's legacy. He says, I am very proud of daddy's name. He sings family tradition seems to be more of an effort to put put his father's and his own naysayers in their place. It responds with humor to anybody who dares to disagree with his way of life. There you go. Daryl, there you go. Good old, there, good old Hank. Good I like the honky tonk nature of the song. By the way, <laughs> it was definitely like the fun, the fun country. The- I I enjoy Hank Williams Jr. and Marcus. When we, I mean, we, my dad used to listen to just Hank Williams, yeah. and then of course when Hank Williams Jr. came in, and so Marcus listens yeah. to. So it's just been my entire life. Those Williams. Yeah, those Williams. Uh, Ashley Ashley Feller saying this is a hundred dollar request for the chip jar one hundred percent all day long. That's right. So listen, if you guys are gonna, if you guys all go see Ashley play, um, and you want her to sing this song, boom, you better be dropping a a C note in there. <laughs> what a fun song for her to sing! I would love to hear her spin on it. Yeah, we're gonna have to do that one day Ashley. when we're when somehow when we're all magically together. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, so what do I think of the song? Yeah. I, I thought it was good. I think it's fun. I mean, uh, I, I don't ever remember. I don't personally remember kind of hearing this song. However, I'm sure really? I've heard it before. Sure. I just can't remember it. But um, let me play a little bit of it for people that don't know the tune, because I'm sure there's some people there that don't know the song. Um, but let's check out. I, a won't, little... I won't judge anyone who doesn't. Yeah, let's let's <laughs> listen to a little family tradition. This is a great song. So hockey talk is great. This is like such juke joint stuff. <laughs> Country music singers have always been a real close family. But lately, some of my kin folks have disowned a few others and me. <laughs> I guess it's because I kind of changed my direction. Lord, I guess I went and Get on me, want to know Hank, why do you drink? Get drunk. Hank, why do you roll smoke? Get, Get high. high. That's my rule. Here, it's so great. Yeah, I mean, you got you got to appreciate this song uh, for for definitely for what it is, and the fact that yeah, he is, you know, I ma- making light of like what has happened in his family, family. when he's got, and you know, and turn it into something that's <laughs> enjoyable. I mean, absolutely. Now, I could definitely see this though being like a nice like this. This is definitely a good like stoner tune. I'm just gonna say it. I think it's a good stoner. Song. <laughs> and in fact, it, then I found this then because this then led me down. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna save this. I'm okay. gonna save this list. I have a list, but I'm gonna save it for when we get to Casey Musgraves. Okay. Actually, okay. I don't want. I don't want to spoil because I'm because I I found it while I was doing research on Casey Musgraves. So I'll wait to okay. bring that up a little All bit right. later in the show. But so where do I rate this song? Where do I rate Bocephus's 
Hank Williams Jr., um, Family Tradition. I think this is a good song. This is definitely something I would put on. I would I would choose to listen to this song. I would put this on. So I'm with you, Amanda, much like Portishead, uh, All Mine. I'm in a four-record realm nice. for this song. I, I'm in four records for this Look one. Look at us I, being in the spirit yeah. today. No, I, I like this one. I think it's cool. It's definitely like a fun. And this is actually a great like hanging out in the backyard very tune, much. so i don't even need to be you know partaking mm-hmm. um you know in, be a good barbecue song even, right it's just a good fun. good hanging in the pool good you know yep. good good drinking tune add you know. this to your summer list and people this is definitely getting added to the summer list is definitely getting added to the summer nice. list so hey guys so let us know everybody who's watching live right now let us know have you guys agreed with our rating so far what would you rate these songs on a scale of one to five records also you know for anybody uh watching on demand or if you are uh listening on the go you know let us know in the comments there uh, and i know on spotify we can vote and all that stuff too so but let us know what you are thinking about these songs and what songs should have made our list that haven't we want to hear from you guys and with all that being said, we are just going to take a super quick break, and we will be right back in 60 seconds. Welcome to the greatest night out with your bestie your ears will ever have. I'm Amanda Yoa, your host and hype woman of Staying Inspired, showing out every week with that she said what energy to give you a dose of humor, inspo, entertainment, and even at times a keeping a real kick in the butt so you can stand out in a world where we're encouraged to just fit in. This is where inspo air humps humor and visions and dreams become real life. He didn't even come up to me himself. I remember one time I was like, I'll dance with you. So then we <laughs> dance. I remember answer. I'm like, what? Yeah, save room for the Holy Spirit. So I go, I'm like, get my feet done today. So I sit down and I am just in fear of what is going to be under this polish. Police in Mexico are strapped, strapped, right? <laughs> He's like, we need to get out of the car. I'm like, oh my God, we're going to Mexico jail. So what are you waiting for? Check out Staying Inspired, available on Apple, Spotify, YouTube, and other listening platforms. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. And yeah, definitely check out Amanda Yo, Staying Inspired. We love Amanda. She's great. Uh, the other Amanda. <laughs> we have our own Amanda. We got two Amandas. But this, I got my Amanda, which is that girl, and that's Amanda Yoa. Stay inspired. Check out her show. It's great. It's a lot it's fantastic. of fantastic. Yeah. She is. She has such a fun spirit. She does. I I really dig her Instagram and TikToks. I'm like captivated when I see them. It's always yeah. great. Yeah, definitely follow her and, and definitely listen anywhere you get podcasts. So, all right, let's move into our second okay. songs. We have we have our second songs. I'm excited to hear about my second song from you. You know what? You might gotta, be disappointed. Really? I got to feel yes. you've heard this one before. This you has got to be a Marcus. I goes like she's yeah. heard this through Marcus. Yes, and Owen, which yeah. is You Know How We Do It by Ice Cube. I mean, come on. I mean, it's, and I was like, you got to have I got to get some cube on this list, man. It, it's it's it, it, I mean, what can I say? Marcus plays it, Owen plays it. I am surrounded by Ice Cube. <laughs> I love that Mark. I love that. I love that Owen plays this too. So it's like he's, <laughs> he's so cool. Uh, he's listening to the Cube, man. Like, come on. I know. Do, we're gonna stop this recording for just another word from Amanda about her baby. Do you know that child of mine brought me Werther's home yesterday? What? And he said, "Here, mom. Here's some old lady candy for an old lady." Or, <laughs> and I'm like, she loves me. <laughs> You're she some old lady candy for an old lady. <laughs> and he gave me two Werthers. But you know, this is the thing. I actually like Werthers. Yeah, it was something. It was like something nice wrapped up in a in a uh-huh. passive aggressive comment. Yep. Like he and it was so sweet because I'm like, he thought of me. Yeah, it was very nice. He thought of you. However, <laughs> but but I then mean, he had to slip in the old lady. Yeah candy for an old lady <laughs> to me i guess at that age i would have thought 42 was old too <laughs> i guess so i mean you know i guess i would i don't know if i would say well i guess i don't know my I mean, parents there were I would teachers say that were in their 40s i'm sure that i thought oh, yeah. were definitely old in like elementary school so oh, heck yeah 100 yeah, yeah. percent yeah so as cool as he is ice cube in it and all he's also you know where they're candying his mama yeah <laughs> But there's there is not anything to not like about this song. Right. right. This is just a good this is a good song. I, I mean, don't have much to say about it other than song is I great. dig it. 
Yeah, I mean, talk about vibe. I mean, this song is all vibe, man. All vibe. It's so, just, you put it on and right away you're like, mm, mm. you got, you're I, rolling. You're rolling. <laughs> I will say, this one surprised me a little bit as far as it seemed a little bit more upbeat to like get high on. No, not really. I mean, I it's, 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 a, it's a beat, but man, that is this is a major groove and vibe. I mean, this, believe me, uh, Amanda, trust yes. me. Okay, okay. I will trust you. Take my I word know. on this one. I have no authority in this matter. It's a okay. good, this is a good song. And okay. by the way, I'm just going to say this right now, just so it's out here. I know everybody's like, oh my God, how could you not put Funk Dubious? Pa- I, I know, pass me by. It, it, I, I could have done it. I should have done it. But then I was like, but Cube, <laughs> and I'm like, I got to give Amanda Cube. So... That's and I'm why glad you did. It's pa- no Pass Me By is not on the list. I, I get it. I mm-hmm. should have put Willie Nelson on it, but I didn't. But you did. not We only have six songs. Right. We only have six songs. So why why not do something just a little bit? A little yeah. Bit so everything. I was pleasantly surprised by Ice Cube yeah. on this list. It it really, it, it, when you listen to all of these, it's yeah. a really fun little playlist. It is a fun little playlist. It really is. So I listen, like and by the way, everybody. Too. If you want to hear any of these songs, you could just, uh, they're all on Spotify. We actually have this all curated on our Song yes. Swap Show on 2024 playlist. So just go search that or use the link in our notes or scan the QR code on the screen. But let's let's listen to a little, you know how we do it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's Bye. how we do it. Bye, Ice Cube. Let's check this out. Let's go. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Fool. You know how we do it. I mean, Right away. Let's go. I mean, I like the rap song hitting all night long. Just like me on the black and white ivory. Getting six on a deal. You don't want to see a Jeep break your ass like dishes. I mean, bust her ass tricks. Sleep with the fishes. Running from Lennox up at Venice. They want to have me in stripes like Dennis the Menace But that ain't poppin', ain't no stopping. Four hoppin', ass dropping. Coop the bill, my troop can heal Fool, I got skills So back on up or I check that chin Down as fuck and I'm full off hand You gets no love and I thought you knew it Fool, you know how we do it Oh yeah I mean Come on like a cruising song exactly. which i guess is kind of the vibe i suppose of somebody who's just chill and relaxing oh but yeah I see this being on in a summer like summer day cruising oh yes. on the road just really enjoying this because this is what i would have listened to with marcus cruising down the road back in the day so it, it's good I, I really really enjoy it yeah this is this is a hundred percent um Definitely a rolling tune, you know, like, yeah, cruising for sure. Definitely hanging out in the backyard, barbecuing, having 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 some drink, taking some tokes. It's it is it is a great taking some tokes. Is that what you said? Taking some tokes. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, no, no lingo. (laughs) Um, No, this is a good one. I mean, I uh, is definitely like a really good locked in chill tune. Um, One of my favorites. This is this is on multiple playlists. I multiple playlists but it's definitely one to uh you know listen if, if you partake in the uh in the in the in the in the green stuff <laughs> the green nuggets <laughs> uh you know definitely definitely check this out because i think it's a uh, try it I, i'm sure most people who are listening to this mm-hmm. particular show and like mm-hmm. ooh, have probably been have got a relationship with this song but uh it is a, it is a good one for sure so so uh, let me ask you yes before i give my rating yes so there is now edibles yes and then there's the stuff you smoke flower right the f- okay flower power flower there's oil okay too, oil so is there something though obviously the end result may be the same but is there something more therapeutic about mm-hmm. like the hand movement because i think people a lot of smokers there it's the habit of yeah i mean you definitely yeah. I will say like um smoking it's the fastest way. Um Oh, to have it be effective. Right. To get okay. the to feel okay. the effects because okay. it's going directly into the lungs, which is directly into the bloodstream. So you get it's much faster. It's the fastest delivery method of okay. the uh of the effects. However, 
Um, I am actually much more as I've gotten older, um, and I don't smoke really as much because I do have asthma, so I am careful with that. So I I absolutely Amazing. prefer edibles <laughs> versus the actual <laughs> smoking. Um, but you know, always you know, always with edibles, you got to be careful because. They never onset very fast, you know, and so you may be like, oh, this isn't doing anything. Ooh. Give it some time. Oh, we mm. start slow. Don't eat the whole mm. edible at once. <laughs> Take it easy, everybody. Amanda especially especially if trouble. if you're if you're not used to it <laughs> and you want to celebrate for 420, my advice, especially when it comes to edibles, is don't do the whole thing right away. <laughs> cut it in quarters, cut it in halves. Baby I'm bites. Telling you, telling you. It, but if you if you're seasoned and you're fine, then hey, you you do you. <laughs> Listen to your, all I always say is listen to your body. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. Read the dosage label. Yeah, 100%. Labeled? Well, you know, so like milligrams. So like I am a lightweight. I will, I am going to be the first of my, I'm a lightweight. I'm not a high milligram user in that sense. Like I'm in the, I'm in the two to two to 10 milligram territory when it comes to, okay. you know, product. Um <laughs> <laughs> Again, this show is for entertainment purposes only <laughs> and education. <laughs> um, no, but uh, that that's me. So, but some people are very, you know, they they are uh, they have a tolerance. They have a, they have a higher tolerance, and also too. I mean, listen, it's also not all about recreation. It's also I'm gonna PSA. It's also about medicine too. Uh, by the way, a everybody. million percent. So as much fun as we have with the recreational side, it's also it is plant medicine first. So and I will. That's say my PSA. And I will add to that PSA before it was even legal in Michigan. I thought the medicinal purposes in which it gave people who had very bad pain relief, Heck I was yeah. a champion for. I think everyone yes. deserves to be pain free. Yes, absolutely. And okay. Yes. So where do I rate? <laughs> where do I rate? Right on my you shirt. Know how <laughs> we do it by Ice Cube. Yeah. Where are you rating it? <laughs> <laughs> um, for records. Four records for the Four cube. Four records for the cube. And, <laughs> and Ashley coming in and saying, happy to be from a medical state. That's Amen. right. Florida and is a medical state. I think it's on your ballot, though, uh, this year. Uh, Ooh, am, I, am I right it. about that, Ashley, that it's on the, it's on the ballot to go uh, adult use this year? I, I can't remember if that's uh, – I think mm. that might be on your ballot, but whatever. Let us let me Look know. At you being political. I like uh, it. <laughs> yep, it is. More That's record. what I thought. Yeah. You're good. Very, yeah. good. very, very good. Yeah. All right. Well, here we go. We are moving in to go. our uh high our, time. <laughs> high time. So uh before we moving in to, to my girl Casey Musgraves. Yes. <laughs> uh real quick, um guys, listen, we have a Patreon account. I know we talk about it a lot and how do we every how do you guys make money on this show? How do you guys continue to do this show each and every week? Well, some of it is hopes and dreams. That's mm -hmm. one part. <laughs> one part <laughs> hopes and dreams. Uh, but the other part is yes, we we do rely on the support of our audience, our community. You guys are just so awesome. We love you. You guys show up here on Mondays for the live stream, even at a weird time like 8 15 a.m. You guys are here and participating. We love you. Um, but there is also other ways to contribute. So if you are looking to support us in more ways than showing up here um, or sharing the show, which you guys are always great about, you can join our Patreon account, which is honestly, you could join it for as low as one dollar. And we've got all kinds of great perks, including we take requests. You could actually be on the show. All kinds of awesome membership benefits. Plus, you get to try it out free. Like you actually get to sign up for free, try it out uh, for seven days, see if you like it. And if you do, great. You can throw us a dollar, two dollars, fifteen dollars, whatever you want. Uh, we are constantly posting content in there. In fact, just this week, I just posted. I know everybody's been waiting for this. <laughs> my top 10 Metallica songs list. Uh, Amanda hard. was waiting for that one. I she know was I like, was. Chris. When are you releasing your top ten Metallica songs list? Well, guess what? I mean, it's in it's in our Patreon. It's there, and I got more coming. I've got I'm gonna be doing a Kiss list. I'm gonna be doing a Van Halen list. I'm gonna be doing a. Z I got lots of lots of my top ten lists all queued up, but I'm gonna be pumping them in our Patreon account first for our members before it goes on to YouTube. Um, we just did this with Amanda. 
with our Elvis video, which is up now on YouTube, but it was on our Patreon account first for over a month before we released it onto uh, YouTube. And and I actually edited it a little bit for YouTube. So you guys actually get to see a lot of the unedited stuff too, especially this show as well, because sometimes our live stream does get banned from YouTube and I've got to do some re-editing to get it back up. Yeah. But in Patreon, you guys get to see the raw <laughs> unadulterated version <laughs> of Song Swap Showdown in our Patreon account. So, uh, guys, check that out. You can get there right now, scan the QR code, or use the link in the notes. And I want to say thank you very much to some of our official Patreon members right now. Yeah. Uh, Mark Ronick, Dave Mattingly, Ian from Australia, Australia. Uh, and Johnny Beyond in the back of the Cereal Box crew. Uh, thank you guys so much for your support. And uh, every time someone joins, we will put your name on here and call you out and officially recognize you as an official Song Swap Showdown Patreon member because that's how much we love you guys. That's how much. It's true. And that girl loves you too. I do. I do. Like, I, I just appreciate it. She does. The, the support we get is just very, very special. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, diving back into the music, Casey Musgraves. Casey! High times. I was so happy to see Casey Musgraves' song on your list, by the way. And I could have chosen, yeah, like, so many. I know. I know. And, and to that fact, while I was doing some research on this Casey Musgraves tune... Uh, we came right, whoops, wrong, wrong setting, wrong setting, <laughs> wrong setting. There we go. Sorry. Wrong button there. Uh, came across this article, uh, Ooh, on really Rolling Stone strong. magazine, 20 best country songs to play while getting high. Look at this. Look at that. Huh? Wow. Look at, she's right there. Willie. Right there with Willie. So, yeah. um, I'm just going to go through a few of them really quick. And I want to see Amanda, Good. if you'd heard of these. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So it's a mix. It says from modern classics mm -hmm. by Casey Musgraves and Eric Church to oldies but goodies by Wailing Jennings and Willie Nelson. Mm -hmm. um, so obviously high time mm -hmm. right away up here. That, and we're going to be talking about that in just a little bit. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so this is what she used to. Uh, and I, I got a little funny story about how she used to like wake up and do gravity bongs and stuff like that. So uh, <laughs> Aaron, Aaron Lee Tajon. Hard Life? Do you know this song? I don't know that one. I don't know who Aaron Lee is. Aaron Lee, yeah, and I don't know. Am I saying that right? Tajon? I don't. I never. I, I'm going to get country fans who are like, how are you country without yeah. knowing them? So Aaron Lee, Hard Life. Okay. okay. Phosphorescent Reasons to Quit. I don't know that one. You don't know yeah. this one either. No. It says any self-respecting toker would would queue up <laughs> Willie Nelson and require and require, but fo phosphorescence take on redhead on the redheaded stranger cast a new spin on the timeless songs thanks okay. to so I, he obviously did they did a cover. Interesting. I okay. Guess. Jason Bolin, when I'm stoned. I don't know that one. Wow, um, Amanda, these, I am these I am are shocked lot. right now. These are on like. The album type of stuff, like you know what I mean. They're not the one. They're not. These are these are deep cuts. Yes, that's these are what you're not played right. on the radio. Okay, Zach Brown Band toes. Toes. I love that song. You know this one. Yes, and you do too. I do. Toes in the, toes in the water. Oh, okay. Yeah, you know that. All right, I know that. You're you're right. I do. Yeah, all right, so let's let's go on to the where's the uh, where's Wait, the rest where's, of the where's the where's the other ten? Yeah, where the heck's the rest of the list? <laughs> Willie, where'd you put them? Just, just goes to the uh, <laughs> where's the rest of his list? Well, well, you know what, the rest were just Casey Musgraves. <laughs> I it might be. Oh, view complete list. There Here we, we go. go. <laughs> I'm like, what the heck, Rolling Stone? Or you put this list. Oh, Brothers Osborne, Green Pastures is on here. Oh, my gosh. I feel so. Oh, yeah. Kenny Not Rogers in the first edition just dropped in to see what my condition was in. And I love Kenny Rogers. That's a deep. That's got to be. Like, all these have to be deep cut. Minus. Look, it's a first top ten hit movies. with the first edition. I'm going to, okay, we got to play that. So it was already three called? decades old by the time it appeared in a big Lebowski. All right, hold on. I'm going to, I'm going right to find it right now. Play. I mean, I know we're All derailing right. this show, you guys. But Not really. This is the, this I is mean, the show, we're, everybody. We're, we're staying on point, but off track. Well, listen, this is, this is, this is I the show. I love me some Kenny Rogers. All right, here we go. I you got it. I know this that. song from Big Lebowski. And Ashley saying that is a great song. 
by Kenny Rogers. I'm man, right, I am go. living under the rock when it comes to get high stuff. Here we go. I woke up this morning with the sun down shining in. I've never heard this. I found my mind in a brown paper bag, but then have you ever seen the Big Lebowski? No. Oh. Down a cloud and fell eight miles high. This is very like on point for this on jagged sky. It's Kenny Rogers. I just dropped in to see what condition my condition was in. Oh my gosh, this yeah, is way different than yeah, Islands in the Green. Yeah, that's a great. That's a great tune. Wow, I'm surprised you didn't hear that one. No. I okay. Well, you I, have to first of all, guys, is everybody just as, as much in shock as me that Amanda hasn't seen The Big Lebowski? So, Amanda, you must watch The Big Lebowski. The Big Lebowski. You must watch it. I'm positive Marcus has already seen it. I'm sure he has. It's a must watch. Okay. Must watch movie. Okay. Um All right. So, Brothers Osborne Green Pastures, you know that one? Mm, I did I we do talk not. about that one? All right. Miranda Lambert, good old days. Now, Miranda Lambert is one of the... That's your people. <laughs> She's my people. <laughs> no, I like some Miranda Lambert. I like some of the Miranda Lambert stuff you've said. Yeah. yeah. It's not bad. Yeah. I, I, I we, like I like her. I think she's I she's think she's so, got a great voice. She is very talented and very trashy and raw. <laughs> yeah, I love it. I love this. It's the sort of song that's built for back porch guitar pulls and campfire sing alongs. Two prime opportunities for winding down and smoking up. <laughs> there you go. There you go. All right. Sergio Simpson, it ain't all flowers. Mm, you know that this one? one? I may. I okay. bet I know it not by name. I wonder if they might. Can I play them here? Oh, I can. Oh. oh look. Does everybody hear that? Yeah, I do. Everybody does. My uh, my brother in law is a big Sturgill Simpson fan. This is very psychedelic. Very. Let's get to the point where he's singing. Oh, this sounds this sounds super sixties. I don't know this one. These are all like everything I don't want to see, but it ain't all flowers. Sometimes you gotta feel the thorn. No. Man, I dig this. Play with the devil, you know you're gonna get to home. This is this is this is this, this is, is up your alley. I'm digging this. Oh yeah, I'm digging that. All right, that that's I would have known that one. Yeah. I would have passed that on to you. All right, Florida Georgia Line Sundays. Do yeah. you know this tune? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Chris Stapleton might as well get stoned. That one. You do. Yes. Oh, okay. All right. So we're getting new riders of the but- purple saga. Nope. <laughs> Don't know that one. <laughs> part hippie, part hillbilly. Panama Red from New Riders of the Purple Saga's most successful records, The Adventures of Panama what Red. Name? Groovy psychedelic rock perfect for cruising along highways. Oh. Okay. Oh, video no longer available. All right. Graham Parsons, Return of the Grievous Angel. Yes. No. No. no? All right. No. Eric Church, uh, Smoke a Little yeah. Smoke. Yeah. All right. Emmy Lou Harris, Jupiter Rising. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So we're getting it. Wailing Jennings, of course. Well, way more. Course. Way more's blues, right? Yes. We, we all know that one. Yes. Sitting in limbo by by the man Willie Nelson. Willie really himself. I just love how unapologetic he is about his. This is a great song too. This is <laughs> yeah, because it's like reggae. <laughs> this is awesome. I, Sitting I really here in really. limbo. I got some time to search my soul. That is fantastic. Only Willie Nelson could pull this off, by the way. Well, they're putting up resistance, but I know that my faith will lead me on. It's a good one. Mm. Sir Douglas Quintet at the crossroads. Johnny Cash Sunday morning Mm -hmm. coming down. That's a great one. And that was it. Yeah. Written by Chris Christopherson, too. Yep. That one almost. Almost, and there's a duet that has yeah. like the three of them, has Willie and Chris on there, and it's that's cool. Excellent. Yeah, I don't know if I've heard that one. Gretchen Wilson, Grandma. <laughs> Gretchen Wilson, so trashy. I love her so yeah. much. She is trashy. <laughs> yeah. All right, and Casey Musgrave, High Time, which is the song we are talking about right now. Yes. So I know we could go on this list forever, but I do want to get on to Casey Musgrave's um, High Time. High, high Time. So listen, 
I like me some Casey Musgraves. Mm-hmm. And by the way, talking about Casey, and we, I think this was on our, our Christmas show too. Mm-hmm. The, the Casey Musgraves and Willie Nelson song together on her Christmas record is great because it's all about getting high on Christmas. And it was, her I love it. Christmas album is phenomenal. Yeah, it is. It is. And now Casey Musgraves definitely known for her partaking and getting high. And she actually, I had this like, there was this like a uh, little funny thing that I had read. Um, that was that was pretty good about her, um, especially on this um, this yeah. particular album. Yeah. So she actually, and actually, uh, one of the things that she's actually just come out. I just said actually like five hundred times in a row. <laughs> uh, she That's is going another actually, Chris. <laughs> she her new record actually came out on my birthday, uh, March fifteenth this year, mm-hmm. and she is no longer smoking weed. She's given it up. Interesting. Yep. yep. And this is on CMT.com. Wow. She went on officially CMT.com to go. She, uh, Casey Musgraves' outspoken adoration for marijuana in recent years became a large part of her public persona as reflected in her oh. music. And while she still sings about hitting a bong in her new song, Deeper Well, the reality is these days are behind her, she recently told the cop. She said, it's not for this chapter, she said, thinking it's funny that people still believe she's a heavy pot smoker. She said that was in her early 20s behavior. She sings, I used to wake and bake, roll out of bed, hit the gravity bong that I made and start the day for a while. It got me. Everything I did seemed better when I was high. I don't know why. So I'm getting rid of habits that I feel are good at wasting time. She said she isn't slamming the door on the habit forever. She goes, maybe later when I'm, I'm a 60 year old lady with nothing to do and I'm just doing pottery all day. Maybe then we'll see. So as much as you know, her she's really uh, embraced the cannabis culture. Uh, she is saying for now, she's done with it, and I I respect I that. I'm that. okay with it. I think sometimes when 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 cannabis becomes your whole thing and it's like becomes your persona, I do think it gets my personal opinion. I think it gets a little crazy. And she's so much more than just that. She's she very so talented. talented. I love it. And her she's Christmas like, record yeah. is one of my favorite Christmas records. It I is. I think it's great. So yeah. good. And she's getting older. So yeah, the the yeah. stoner era for some people is when they're younger some yeah. people you know do it when they're 60 and doing pottery is exactly <laughs> exactly exactly so all right so let's listen to a little bit of casey musgraves high time i just she's so fun she is fun i and really i really crazy. like her i really dig her and this is coming off of her record um pageant, pageant material, material. so good the whole, whole album material. yeah all right, come on high time there we go it's having come on Spotify. Hi, Spotify. Come on. I bet it's gonna work now. Here Fingers go. there. We go. Love. Amanda loves her good hand claps and whistling. This is a complete stoner tune. <laughs> this is a ditty. It is a ditty for sure. It, it is. It, it is a ditty. And I could definitely see uh, why this makes the list. Rolling Stone's list of top 20 stoner tunes. I uh, feel Country so stoner tunes. So, yes. Amanda, great pick, by the way. Thank then. you. Because <laughs> you, you picked with Rolling Stone pick. You're, you're, mean, you're in step with Rolling Stone. Color me surprised. You are. <laughs> You are. You should be surprised. <laughs> I know. No, but, everyone should be surprised. But but I, I love this tune. I think it's really cool. And uh, I think it's solid. I would, once again, I would choose to put this on. I like Casey Musgraves. I know I always talk about not being this huge country fan. Mm-hmm. Casey Musgraves, her voice, the her whole vibe, you know, definitely speaks to me. Like, I, I'm i I'm all Very about cool. Casey Musgraves. I will say I haven't listened to, to the newest record yet. I haven't listened to it yet, so I gotta I gotta get on that. I'm I'm a little behind on listening to some new tunes, but 
Uh, I am going to check that out very soon. And I like this song. It's a good tune, man. I got nothing against, I got nothing against this song at all. Beautiful. Not It doesn't offend me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I would choose to put this on. So I'm going to give this song slightly better than a 4.0. I'm going to give it a 4.2. Oh, my gosh. This is so far all fours. All fours. Listen, you know, I'm going to go to 4.20. <laughs> <laughs> what you did there well uh, done uh, uh. well done well done Zach Leo. Yeah. Uh, okay all, all right. right so let's just real quick before we get into our third songs i just want to yeah. look at some of the comments because we got a lot of great comments coming in on, on the thing so i want to go back to D- dave's comment um about kenny rogers he goes just dropped in as one of my favorite kenny rogers songs yeah yeah oh yeah that's right that's right um I'm disappointed and in myself that I didn't my, know that song. My sister's saying, Christian can hang out with Paul and listen to Sergio Simpson. Welcome to my exciting Friday nights. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, I might. I might. This is my speed now. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Uh, so let's uh, usually, and usually, as always, Dave and Ian always drop comments uh, as far as song picks for us. So yeah. what are Dave's song picks for us? So he has put in my high songs for Chris. Um, that one guy one okay stump buffalo so by the way let me just say the name of the band is that one guy and the song is one one and then stump is the name of the band artist song is called buffalo I... wild man fisher song merry-go-round okay for, for amanda for that girl mm-hmm. uh my songs are beatles i am the walrus <laughs> <laughs> yeah, smoke pot, smoke pot. Everybody smoke pot on the outro. Yep. <laughs> Three Dog Night, Mama Told Me Not to Come. That would be so sad. And Led Zeppelin, Misty Mountain oh. Hop. Misty you know, Mountain Top, I was saying. <laughs> top. Do you know Misty. any of these songs? You guys, no. you know I am the walrus. I do I? By the Beatles? I don't do I, I know am the walrus. Oh. Coo-coo-coo-choo. Yes. It says smoke pot, smoke pot. Everybody's if you listen to the outro, on. it's if you listen to the outro, it's oh my gosh, those Beatles sneaking one in on me. Come on, <laughs> <laughs> you're just you're just realizing that now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, Woo. we all know I make up words. God only knows what I was singing yeah. at that point. <laughs> Misty Mountain Hop is such a great Led Zeppelin song. Interesting. Spoiler alert: It may make my top ten list of <gasps> of Led Zeppelin songs, Woo. but. But uh, when I make that video, you guys, all, that's why, know. that's why you guys need to be in our Patreon. So that way right. you will see that video first it's before true. anybody else. And you will d- know definitively <laughs> what's on Chris's list. <laughs> I know everybody's <laughs> jonesing to know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, we and I don't, th- did he, in- I don't think he even put anything in. I know he, he drops. Oh, here we go. Sorry. Ian. there we go. Okay. My songs, Elevator Driver. The Master's mm-hmm. Apprentices, Come Fly With Me, The La Didas, and the greatest psychedelic song ever, The Real Thing by Russell Morris. And I did have, in case we had time, I didn't know if we were going to have time, but I did, uh, Ian, I dropped all his stuff in our uh, in our Facebook group, and so I, I did bring up the videos, but that may have to be a Patreon special. Mm-hmm. I don't this know if we're going to have enough time, but yeah, <laughs> we'll, we'll, have to, we'll have to watch those in Patreon, and, uh, and Amanda and I will we'll react to those. <laughs> We would run out of time talking about getting high. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> well, that actually sounds about right. We're either late or we're going over because we don't we lost all track of time. Um, saying, off. Dave, okay. I am the walrus. May or may not say smoke pot, smoke pot on the outro. Well, it depends, Dave, how much you've personally partaked. You can partaked. hear a lot of things okay. in music that mm-hmm. you know. Oh, fin- finely tuned senses. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. What your state is. Yes. Yes. Okay. Talking about what your state is. Let's go into your third and final song to me, which third and final song. So this is what happens. <laughs> I will put our songs on Spotify mm-hmm. and then Chris oftentimes will go, oh, I updated it with the right version. <laughs> right. And I'll go, thank you. So when I put these on there, I was like, I really hope Chris updates it and says, there, you have the wrong version on there. <laughs> so I appreciate that you put them both on here because they <laughs> do, because they, they are, they do go along. However, I am, I was specifically talking about parts one through five. I was committed. And I, and I should have, and that is my fault. I yep. should have specified that. <laughs> But I do like that you put them both on. I so did. I'm not I'm not going to be upset. No, no. And so 20 minutes later, yeah. 
I so was Amanda, still what, partaking. <laughs> what song are we talking about here, Amanda? Thank you. Shine <laughs> on, you crazy diamond by Pink Floyd. And I can't think of who she has the really injected lips and she's doing like an insurance commercial, I think. No, it's like a Capital One, like a credit card commercial. Mm. And she talks real funny. I love it. And I can see her saying, shine on, you crazy diamond. Oh, Jennifer Coolidge. Yes, thank you. Can't you see her saying that? I can. She's great. And I love Jennifer. (laughs) She's so funny. Yeah, Shine on, you crazy Crazy diamond. diamond. Um, So I normally listen to songs several times, but I'll right. listen to this one twice because I went the whole piece. You went, you went the whole distance on this one. I went one. the whole distance. And you know what? I could see as soon as I started playing it, there's – I don't want to downplay this song by saying there's not much to it because there's so much to it. It's very layered. But it's also – there's not – it's not like listening to High Time for 20 no. minutes. No, no. It's kind of like background music. It takes you on a trip. It's a journey. Yeah, it's a journey. It's There's not... movements throughout the song. Yes, yes. And so you do have to listen to the whole thing because it changes throughout that time. It does. Where a lot of it's just like the instrumental, but then there are some lyrics. And yeah, it's... it's 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 very instrumental heavy, um, and then comes into the lyrics, and then and then you know kind of finishes up and then goes into so wish you were here as a record so pink floyd's wish you were here came out um prior to uh the wall and all that and this was and i don't know how much research you did on this record i did okay. read up that it was written to one of the original or written yep. in in observance of that original member who just yep. kind of went down the path of yes yeah, sid, sid barrett um, the original the founding member, basically one of the founding yeah. members of of Pink Floyd. It was him and Roger Waters and all. You know, all went to art school together. Mm. Sid Barrett. Um, those first two Pink Floyd records that Sid Barrett was on. I mean, he was a chief songwriter, and that was when Floyd was in their super second. I mean, it was the '60s. Sure. Uh, but so influential and such a great songwriter, and unfortunately, um, experimented a little too hard. With uh, LSD and acid, mm-hmm. and also, but on top of that, um, basically was probably at that time they weren't diagnosing for things like bipolar and depression and, health issues, and yes. mental health issues, and that exasperated the situation where then he wound up basically having a complete breakdown. Yeah. And uh, there's videos on YouTube you could watch of of his unfortunate downfall and just kind of being on stage, walking off, playing like a single note, just. You know, it's it's sad to watch somebody who completely is, uh, you know, just just falling apart like that, yeah. and yeah. and it's very unfortunate. And he never recovered, and just kind of really, honestly, kind of went mad. And yeah, there's and this record is basically a tribute. It's a basically a whole record's like a giant tribute to Sid Barrett and uh, the band that he started with these guys, and obviously, you know, what Pink Floyd had had become and all that, and there's even that, like, where they were doing the song, and he just kind of walked into the studio, and nobody even recognized him, because no one had seen him in years, and he was, like, kind of overweight and bald, and no one had recognized him. They're like, who's this guy that just walked in, and then they realized it was Sid. Mm. So it's, like, even these, like, weird stories where it's, like, they're doing a record about him, no one's talked to him, and he just wanders into the studio, like, and there he is, and so I mean, there's a lot. There, guys. There's tons and tons of stuff about Sid Barrett that you could watch on YouTube and books and all that. Um, mm-hmm. It's a, it's definitely a tragic story for somebody, but we did get a an amazing piece of art out of it, which is you know Pink Floyd's "Wish You Were Here" and "Shine You Crazy Diamond." We always talk about album openers and album closers a lot in the show, and talk about a bucket mm-hmm. of our uh, of a record that really operates from start to finish, the whole thing, like. Well, it's like we always say, you know, you know, with with Dark Side of the Moon and and uh, in the wall, like you have to listen to these records all the way through. Yeah, sure. they're standout songs, but they do tell a story, a, right? To get the complete yeah. feel, that's mm-hmm. "Wish You Were Here" is that record and "Shine on You Crazy Diamond." I've always, always Shine loved on this you crazy diamond, and the live versions are even better. Like I, so, I can't tell you. There's so many times I would come home from high school, and uh, it just put this on and relax like uh, not even like not even do any like i just would throw it on and sit in my bed and just relax it was such a great way to just decompress from like a day Mm -hmm. um i would throw this on and just decompress because it's just got that feel and that vibe for me so 
I that, that's I can really I respect this. that because I do that often with classical music, and I know I might sound yeah. like a nerd when I say that, but it's just no. because I don't want to hear I don't want to hear words sometimes. Yeah. I just want to feel it. Yeah. I just want it to take me away, and this song does do that. So I mean, I could see when I started hearing this and listening, I go, "This is this is the perfect get high song." It to really take you is on the journey that you're gonna go on. <laughs> it really is, man. I mean, it's it's such a great, and I love Dave, David Gilmore's guitar playing. I feel like it's just so all great. It's so full of emotion and feel when you hear him play, and then you know you can enhance that experience. Mm-hmm. So. I know pretty much everybody's heard this song. I'm just going to play a, a little bit of it, though, just so everybody can. I'll move it along a little bit, too. So, Did, so tell me this. Do radio stations play this? Classic rock radio will play this. Okay. Um, you know, yeah, it's a very slow build, but I mean, classic rock radio will play this song. Okay. Especially Sirius XM because there's no commercials anymore, so they don't care. True, true. But it's like, I'm going to move it along here. This is a good, I have to go to the bathroom and warm up my coffee. Yeah. DJ song. (laughs) It's just so good. That guitar playing, man. It's very mellow. It does put you in a different, like, calm down zone. I just feel like I'm floating in the ocean. (laughs) I can can respect that. (laughs) Hey, man. You know... (laughs) I feel like every note is very intentional. So soulful. Mm-hmm. That's a good word for that. I love when it kicks in the actual. <laughs> I just move it up. Minute five. Yeah, just move it. But I love this. This is my favorite. The. coming you guys we promise it's coming it's coming you guys have heard this song you guys know, you guys know this i really had not i uh i will not shocked by that 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 i love that <laughs> this could be like someone traveling through like the desert yeah. in a movie yeah. this entire Tum- album is of it it really is tumbleweed going yeah like someone's lost in the desert and they're yep. looking for water. I love how it's so intentional. It's so good. Come on. Ah, it's so great. I, I just want to listen to the whole thing. <laughs> and so I'm, I'm, I'm getting locked in, but I'm gonna because I know we're gonna we'll get be here dumped. Into 11. Yeah. Oh, we're gonna get dumped if I keep playing it. So I, I, uh, but yeah. So shine on you, crazy diamond parts one and five, and then yeah, in six and nine, which close the record out. So it's kind of you know tells the complete story. Anyway, so Amanda Sharp, yeah, the world is waiting. Mm-hmm. Not having heard Pink Floyd's mm-hmm. shine on you, crazy diamond before. Mm-hmm. Not really even a big Big Floyd fan, but now no. we, we talked about Pink Floyd two times in a row now. Because yeah. last week we yeah. talked about Dark Side of the Moon and Eclipse and all mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. Where are you rating? Believe this? it or not, on a scale of one to five records, this would be it? on. I have not put it on yet because I feel like sometimes my working through life playlist has different songs on it. But I could see where this could be a very hmm. nice working through life song to put on it's 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 just thought provoking like when i'm trying to figure something out i don't need the endurance of like adrenaline i need the endurance of like thought right and i think this is a really interesting song to get me there and so i do think i'm gonna turn this song on intentionally which may be a shocker to a lot of people i wouldn't skip it and i actually would turn it on to listen to So for that reason, I'm giving it four records. I enjoy it. So all of your songs this week, sir, four records, 16 records records for Chris Baglio. Wow. 12 records. I'm (laughs) (laughs) sorry. 
<laughs> I was looking at another one of my fours. Yeah. Thank you for mathing. Listen, we all know we're not good at mathing on the show. The show's not called Math sh- Math Showdown. <laughs> <laughs> math Swap. Oh my gosh, it's not it's Song Swap. Which yeah. I speaking of math, I was doing some mathing about the show, right. and I didn't get like to the penny. Yeah. But do you know we've probably reviewed 700 songs at this point? Oh my god, really? 700 because we easily have did 100 to what 120 shows. Yeah. And that's like 6 to 700 songs we have been reviewing. Wow. Cuz every week we do 6 every one and we only take a couple weeks off a year, so that's we That's true. We've now reviewed a lot of music. Wow. Yeah, so well done, Chris Baglio. All right, all right. Well, well done. That, that's that's pretty impressive. <laughs> that's <laughs> you know, pretty impressive. It is pretty impressive. And before we move on to the final song of the show, I don't want to forget to do this because my mind came up. Um, have you or anyone of our listeners watched the show yet? The Hatchet Welding Hitchhiker. I have not. Oh, my gosh. It's phenomenal. Okay. It is about a guy who used a hatchet to save a person who was getting attacked. Oh, is that the is that that's the story about the 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 the, the guy who was like the hitchhiking? Viral guy. Yes, the, the, the viral hitchhiker. guy. Yes, yes. yes. Watch the movie. I think it's on Ooh, Hulu. I'll have to watch it the movie. Is, I know the do- I've watched the documentary on that guy. It's well, it's kind of, it's basically a documentary. I'm sorry, okay. it's not really a movie. But oh my goodness, if you've not th- to talk about this and him during our get high because that's all he wanted to do was just get high in life. And just be free. Uh, excellent, excellent show. If anyone wants a good recommendation of a show to watch, all right, I like that. Okay, there we I'll are. Check there we out. are. There we are. There all we right. are. Okay, all right. Final song of the day. <sighs> Final get high song of the day. <laughs> and that would be Amanda's pick of "Flowers on the Wall" by Eric Heatherly, mm-hmm. which is a cover song, by the way. It is. It is a cover song. And I prefer this version over the Sailor Brothers. Right. I really, really do. It's it's just a little bit updated. Yeah. And this song, um, yeah, was actually made famous originally by the yeah, the Stoller Stoller Brothers. And it was written and composed the Stattler Brothers. The what? The Stattler Brothers. I've always Stattler? called them that like my whole life. Stattler or Stoller? I don't know which it is. I don't know. My 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 laptop with you all my notes on it just Stattler, died too. I say Statler. I don't know what it is, but it's not a surprise if you're right. That's true. Hold but on, let me get either back way, up they made the original song "Flowers on the Wall" right come to life. They did. And the version I sent you though is by okay, here we go. Eric. Heatherly. <laughs> yeah. So it was originally written and composed by the group's original tenor Lou DeWalt, and the song peaked. In 1966, spending four weeks at number two on Billboard Country Billboard Magazine Hot Country Singles Chart and reaching number four on the Billboard Hot 100 chart. Mm-hmm. The song was also used, which a lot of people may remember, the original version was used in the 1994 soundtrack to Pulp Fiction, which is where the song got, which is where I heard the song. In Pulp Fiction, because I love that Pulp Fiction soundtrack. Love it. One of the greatest soundtracks ever. And that song would always come on, and it's the best. I always remember it in the movie and all that. I don't really care for the movie. I mean, I know people love it. It's it's a classic. I love but it. But my favorite, I will say this all the time to Marcus. Anytime like, I want him to like be cool, I'll be like, be cool, honey bunny. Be cool. Like, when be cool, honey restaurant. bunny. Yeah. Be I cool, love honey it. Bunny. I love it. So That's I say best. that. For yeah. years. Be cool, honey bunny. Be, Be cool, cool, honey bunny. <laughs> it's the best. All that diner stuff is great. It is. It we, really is. my wife and I, still do lines from that movie continuously to each other. It's, it, we, it's... we love Pulp Fiction. <laughs> it's so Be great. Be cool, honey bunny. Be cool, honey bunny. Be cool. <laughs> uh, yeah, definitely check out Pulp Fiction if you haven't. And check out the sound. Sa- the soundtrack's great. So the original version of the song is on the soundtrack, which is where I heard it. Now mm-hmm. I didn't know that there was a cover version of it. Done by uh, Mr. Uh, Eric uh, Heatherly. Uh, Heatherly. Uh, but the song, originally in 1966, just a little bit more, won a Grammy Award for Best Contemporary R&R Performance and Group of Vocal and Instrumental. They recorded the song in 1975 for their, for their first greatest hits album for Mercury Records. And then, of course, Eric Heatherly recorded the song in 2000 on his debut record, 
Swimming in Champagne and released as his debut single. And his rendition reached number six on a Hot Country charts and number 50 on the Billboard Hot 100. So this song has had a lot of success for... Two life cycles. Yeah, two life cycles, lots of success. Absolutely. Uh, so if no one remembers the song, if you haven't heard this before, well, let me let me, let me me jar your memory. So we're going to play the, the uh, obviously, the Eric Heatherly version. Mm-hmm. But here we go. But it's and, just I know like you made it more rockabilly too. A little bit. It's just a updated yeah. on our song version of this game. Yeah. He did the uh yeah, he made it a lot more upbeat, like yeah. That, like I keep hearing your concern about my happiness. All that thought you giving me is conscience, I guess. If I were walking in your shoes, I wouldn't worry none. While you and your friends are worried about me, I'm having lots of fun. Counting flowers on the wall, that don't bother me at all. Playing solitaire till dawn, with the deck of 51. Smoking cigarettes and watching Captain Kangaroo. That's my favorite part. I've been listening to Last night I dressed in tails, pretended I was on the town. <laughs> Good song. As long as I like his version. Name, it's hard to slow this winger down. So please don't give I feel like this, me song, this version really yeah. showcases the fun behind the song. Yeah. Where the other version is a much is a I don't know more mature sound. I don't know. Yeah, it's a little. It's a little. It's just a little. You know what? Let me see if I could find it real quick. Absolutely, it's a good just comparison. So could, yeah, just the. I mean, the other is, is good. Go. It's not bad. Yeah, no, this not at all. A little more flavor. Yeah, uh, there we go. Flowers on the wall. Mm -hmm. Let's, mm -hmm. Here's the difference. I'll just. Hearing you're concerned about my happiness, but all that thought you give me is conscience, I guess. If I were walking very traditional. in your shoes, mm -hmm. I wouldn't worry none. While you and your Wait. friends are worried about me, I'm having lots of fun. Counting flowers on the wall, that don't bother me at all. Playing solitaire till dawn. This is my life, the deck of 51. <laughs> Smoking cigarettes and watching Captain Kangaroo. I love that face. <laughs> I love him to do. <laughs> yeah. So you know what it is too. It's very much, very much a product of the. I mean, uh, the '60s. Like it's mm -hmm. very '60s sounding, very like folky. You know, like mm -hmm. country folk. Very much more traditional, yeah, like a little more formal. Shop. Right. Yeah. Barbershop. Like versus. and they're really using yeah, versus the that that version, the Eric Eric Flowers. Is that his name? Uh, Eric Hever Sorry. Heatherly. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you just did a me moment. Eric Flowers. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, his version though is definitely much more it's much more rock, much more upbeat. Mm -hmm. Like you could I, I like his updated take on it though. Mm -hmm. I do too. I think I it's do. good. I love that line. By the way, um, did anybody else watch Captain Kangaroo growing up? Oh, I sure did. Okay. I mean, I know some of our some of maybe some of our younger listeners and viewers may They're not like, remember. Yeah, Captain Kangaroo. Definitely mm -hmm. much 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 more of a product of our childhood, but yeah, I used to watch Captain Kangaroo. I loved Captain Kangaroo. So I always I always <laughs> love that reference. <laughs> Captain <laughs> Kangaroo. So good. And so good. to Ian's point, he says he loves the voices in the original. And I can't argue that. Their voices oh, are yeah. wonderful. Yeah, it's great. They're it's very talented. Very, very. No, I love that, that they're all yep. just singing together, kind of, you know, doing their thing. So it's definitely a big difference, though. I'd say, like, still, it's not like it's such a departure. It's just that he just added that more, like, rockabilly, yeah. more upbeat element to it. Um, you know, It's a product of 2000. Right, exactly. It sounds very much like that. So, all right. So where where, where do I rank this song on a scale of one to five records? Uh, I hadn't heard this song in a while because I hadn't actually listened to the Pulp Fiction soundtrack mm -hmm. in a while. But I there was a time when I listened to that Pulp Fiction soundtrack religiously because I love that movie. And I really think it's a solid soundtrack. And that's a great soundtrack where you listen to the songs and you know the scenes that those songs are in. Like you mm -hmm. 
visually see it. Sure. And I also always love the story. So real quick about Quentin Tarantino, as a, whether you like him or hate him, when he was right, in particular, when he wrote Reservoir Dogs, Pulp Fiction, all that, he, I read an interview, and I don't know if he's still doing that, but he did for that, is that he would actually c- select a soundtrack to songs he would want to hear in the movie first and then write to that. Like, so he kind of reversed it because he wanted to, like, he would hear the music and be like, I want this song, these songs in the movie. And then he would then begin to develop the story and write the script around the songs, knowing that those are the songs he wanted in the movie. And I I always thought that was wild. I love that. I can I can see that because when I listen to something like All Mine. Yeah. I'm already coming up with what the scene is in my head of where right. that music goes. So for him to be inspired by songs and piece together a movie based on mm-hmm. 12 song tra- soundtrack or something, I just think that is phenomenal. And that would make sense why some of his movies are so interesting. Yeah, very interesting. Like yeah. Pulp Fiction is interesting. Yeah, and I love that it's all, you know, it's all <laughs> I always used to say like we used to say like I'd love to like re-edit Pulp Fiction and tell it in order, but <laughs> like <laughs> re-edit it so it's actually in the order of the sequence because it's not, you know, the way it's you watch so it. It's, interesting. It That's bounces sure. the narratives back and forth and all. I mean, I love it. It's great because it keeps you like wondering how it's all going to turn yeah. out, but you know, after you see it, you're like, I would love to see this movie in order just once because yeah. I love to see how different it is. Yeah. But, but uh, all right, so where do we where where am I ranking this song on a scale of yeah. one to five records? Uh, I like the updated version um, for the two thousands. I think it's kind of I think it's cool. It works. Uh, I'm trying to sing. I, I think I would choose to put this on. I mean, I'll definitely. I, I like this version. I think it's cool. Okay. I don't know if it's four records for me. Um, I can understand, but it's not. It's not mediocre either. Okay. So I'm gonna squarely put this at a three point six. 3.6. Well, listen, I accept that because that's very country to me. That rock, like there is. No, there's, and I like rockabilly. I'm a, I am love rockabilly. I just, I feel like that for me, once again, do I, I'm weighing it against the other songs. Like I'm, the other songs excite me. I mm-hmm. like this song. I like the original version that's in the movie. Mm-hmm. I think it's a good song. Um, I like do I feel like it's as good as the other two? No. Fair. But I still feel like it's a good soon. So 3.6 is a I respectable think, rating. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah. So, Chris, it should come at no surprise that this week you are the champion of songs to get high to. <laughs> it, didn't work, it just worked out that way. Everybody. Just, <laughs> we did not stack the deck. He did not, did not wear that shirt deck. knowing no. he's going to be the winner. <laughs> yeah. And shout out to Best Buds. You guys are awesome. No. The whole... Hopefully they'll be open soon in uh in New Jersey. So they're working working very hard to get that to get that dispensary open. So shout out to to my Wish friends over at best. best Buds. Yes, absolutely. How uh, far will that be from you? Uh quite a distance. It's it, okay. they're they're going to be down in southern Jersey, uh, closer to the Philadelphia area. So for me, that's about like a good like hour and a half to two hours away. Oh, okay. Actually, more closer to two hours away. We have. So many dispensaries here around me. Like well, I, can Michigan's drive. Lodo with dispensaries. Yeah, it is, and we are right across the state, like the state line of Ohio yeah. that just now legalized. But they are for many years they weren't. So, yeah. like of course, my area is where they all were. So, I could get to twenty in fifteen minutes or less. It's <laughs> great. Yeah, I mean, they're in, right here in Rockaway, we got two open. Actually, there's in the borough. There's two. There's another one that's open in the township. So, they are uh, they are coming. They are coming, coming to a state near like you soon. Corner liquor stores, basically, but that better. we know <laughs> back in the day, all but the so grandmas much better. and grandpas were all enraged that liquor stores were popping up on the corners. Yeah, times have just changed. Now you can buy safely and legally. <laughs> that's right, absolutely, and that's my thing. Yeah, let's make sure that what you're going to consume is what you're buying. To that's right. Consume. That's right. Support, support your local dispensary. They're small exactly. business owners, just like anybody yeah. else. Support your local dispensary. <laughs> just buy something. Just go in there and buy something. Try it. Try something out. If you've never been in there before, just try something out. Try something that's your speed. Talk to the bud tenders. They're good. But they know to they're your on. and Ashley's point, make sure you read the dosage recommendations. <laughs> make sure, you, yeah, if, especially if it's edibles. Uh, read your dosage. <laughs> you know. If you have questions, talk to your bud tender there. Um, they are there happy go. to help you. They are trained. They will help you. Don't be fearful. It's okay. Everybody's got their first time in there. Don't don't be nervous. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. 
Um, all right. Well, hey, this was an awesome 420 episode, by the way. <laughs> I love this. This was great. Oh, um, this was awesome. I want to thank everybody for joining us today. But the show's not over yet, folks, because we have one last piece of business to attend to. We do. What time is it, Amanda Sharp? It is time to spin the wheel of show things. That's right. Time to spin the wheel of show themes. So, all right, I'm shuffling the wheel. It has been shuffled. 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 And we are going to spin the wheel to see what next week's show theme will be. Tina, it might land on another one of yours. If it lands on another Tina one, I'm going to say she's somehow controlling this. <laughs> yeah, she's she's got like a... Hidden gems on YouTube. I am intrigued by this one because I feel like we find hidden gems on TikTok all the time. I know. Oh, man. I'm going to. And this... now I'll just have to consume a little bit from. Oh, goodness. Well, like Austin Brown. Huge. Yeah. Huge YouTube hidden gem there for a while. Yeah. I mean, there are some good people that are going to be on there. Yeah. So music hidden music, music hidden gems, basically. Because we're going to keep it music based. Obviously, there's a lot of hidden gems, but we're going to keep it music based, music based hidden gems. That will happen to be a video of some sort, yeah. more than likely, but it will be music based to your point. Okay, yeah. this is exciting. Uh, hidden gems in terms of great songs or great videos. I say either or. Either or. It just has to have the song factor. Right. Yeah. So I, I, it's a great question, Dave. And I don't mm -hmm. remember how this that came on. Some somebody was around, or or it was one of ours. So I, I don't know. But I actually don't remember this one at all. But hey, I it's there. Hidden. Either. So I say hidden gems in terms of great songs or great videos. I think either or, right? Because there are a lot of great music videos out there that are yeah. like. Absolutely. Completely forgotten about or, yeah, very hidden. I've never really made it past mm -hmm. uh, mainstream status, but have done maybe well on YouTube and all that stuff. So this is going to be this is going to be a challenge. It is. It is going we'll to be a challenge. To be, I, we'll, I, I there'll don't be a different disagree. level of research that we're going to have to put into this particular episode. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. I already know one. Good. Ooh, I know one, but it won't be appropriate. I know one. And. It may only be a good hidden gen to me, but <laughs> but doesn't I, matter. I I laugh every time I watch it. So, <laughs> and it is mu it is music based. It's hundred percent music based. Mm. So one one's coming to mind right now. So we'll see if it makes it through the week as I begin okay. to compile my list. But hey, guys, listen. Uh, wow. Anybody who's watching this, uh, listening, mm -hmm. let us know. We want to hear from you. Let us know in the comments in our Facebook group. We'll make a post there too, and let us know some of your hidden gems, um, great songs or great videos. I would say great music videos. Let's or live videos, things like it. It has, it has to be music based. It has to deal with mm -hmm. music, like. Obviously, there's a ton of like great meme videos and all that, but let's keep it to to music. So I would say, mm -hmm. great songs, great music videos. Does that, or or, or like a video of a live performance or something like that? Yeah, because it could be very yeah. those deep cut. Like I remember when you sent me, I think it was right. during the pandemic. Like the uh, a bunch of country artists were just sitting around the the campfire. Yeah. yeah, that type of concept. You know, where it didn't go on an album, but they no. all just said it could be a great cover. Yeah. Of a of a yeah. song, you know, just a YouTube YouTuber. Yeah, there's a lot of flexibility here. I'm I'm really excited yep. to do some deep dive in. Absolutely, 100. percent So, all right, everybody. So that is next week's theme: hidden gems on YouTube. All we'll right. close it. Music music gems. We'll call it music gems. Hidden music gems on YouTube. So we'll be posting that in the Facebook group, and of course, you can leave your comments here. And uh, we want to see what you guys think we should feature on next week's show cuz nice. this one will be this one will be a fun one this one will mm -hmm. be interesting for sure all right everybody well that wraps it up for us today thank you all so much for joining us today thank you ashley dave ian from australia uh my sister stephanie, stephanie. checking in I think I got everybody else. You got everyone. Today. Yeah. Yep. Uh, and for anybody else who was watching live, uh, you didn't comment. That's cool. That's fine. We appreciate you hanging out with us here today. Uh, make sure once again, you check out our Patreon. If you haven't done that yet, uh, sign up for free for seven days. Check it out. Uh, as I've said right now, we have our, my top 10 Metallica song lists. 
t- top 10 Metallica songs are, are live on the now, plus a bunch of other awesome content. You could request things in there. We have a bunch of requests going on in there right now for stuff that uh, Amanda and I need to make for everybody and uh, just all kinds of cool stuff. So sign up for that and uh, make sure you hit that subscribe button, the like button, the follow button, all those things. And we will see you next week on another episode of Song Swap Showdown. Bye, everyone.